everyone, Houston Math Prep here. I want to talk about these two different scenarios that we've got here and how they're going to lead us to solving equations by factoring. I've got maybe two numbers multiplied together equal to four versus two numbers multiplied together to give me zero. If we explore the four situation first, you know, we might think of something easy like one times four. Of course, that's going to give us four. Two times two would give us four. Lots of different things. We could even think of like eight times a half is going to give us four. Half of eight is four. Um, you know, something even more different like negative 16, negative a fourth, multiply those. We would also get four. Um, the pattern with some number like four doesn't have to be four. Um, but the idea is if I put a number in one of the boxes, I don't need a specific thing in either of the boxes. But if I look at the other side, where we have this case of two things multiplied together to get zero, if I have five times something gives me zero, or 13 times something gives me zero, anything like negative six times something gives me zero, well that second thing really needs to be then, specifically, a zero, no matter what I have that first number being, if it's not zero. So what we're really saying in the case of zero is that at least one of the boxes, either the second one or the first one, needs to be zero in order for us to multiply to get zero. It's possible, of course, we could have both, but at least one of the boxes needs to be zero. Now that's not true with the other case with a number like four. You know, one of the boxes doesn't necessarily need to be at, you know, one number at least. We can do lots of different things with four, but with zero, that's a specific thing and we call that the zero factor property. And the idea is if I have two things that multiply to give me zero and there's some sort of a real number or a real factor, at least one of those things has to be zero, either the first thing or the second thing or both of them. Being zero is going to make that true. So if we have two real factors multiplied to give zero, we'll get a correct answer when either of them is zero. So when we look at starting to solve an algebra by factoring, we're looking at a situation like this. I have a factor, I have another factor equal to zero. If I can get it to that stage and I know how to factor, which I probably do because we've done a ton of videos on factoring, go check those out. If I can get it to this stage and I know I have two factors or three factors or four factors all multiplying to give me zero, then I know at least one of the factors or all the factors being zero will make this true. So setting each one of the factors equal to zero is going to give us a solution. Let's look at our first example here using the zero factor property. We've got 6x squared minus 9x equals zero. So equal to zero means if I just factor and get one side factored equal to zero, then I can just figure out the answer by setting each factor the same as zero. So we'll go ahead and try to factor this. This is just a greatest common factor. If we look at six and nine, the greatest common factor is three. And if we look at x squared and x, the greatest common factor there is x. So three x is the greatest common factor in general. Three x times what gives us six x squared? Three times two gives us the six, and x times x gives us the x squared. Three x times what gives us negative nine x? Three times negative three would give us the nine, and we already have the x out here. So if I factor out the greatest common factor, I get that three x times two x minus three equals zero. So I have two things multiplying together, giving me zero. And our zero factor property says that if either of those things multiplying together to get zero is equal zero by itself, then we will have an answer. So to solve this problem, I will have my first factor, 3x, and my second factor, 2x minus 3, both equal to 0. Those will give me a true statement for what I'm trying to solve here. Those will give me answers. So if I look at 3x equals 0, I need to undo the multiply by 3, so I will divide by 3 on both sides. When I divide by 3 on the right side, of course, I still get 0. So x equals zero is one of our answers for this problem. If I look over here, this is a linear equation. So first I get the x term by itself. We'll do the opposite of subtract three, which is add three. That takes us to two x on the left side by itself, equal to three on the right side. I'll do the opposite of times two, which is divide by two. And that will give me my second answer, that x equals 
three halves, three over two. So we get two solutions to this problem. So again, solving by factoring this, because we have zero on the other side, we get factors equal to zero, and we set each of those factors equal to zero, as sure as we put zeros in those boxes before, that will give us a true statement. So zero and three halves are the two answers for this problem right here. Let's look at our second problem, x squared minus two x equals three. Now you remember at the beginning of the video, when we said something times something equals four, we could put a lot of things in there and none of those numbers had to be specific things. So we only want to factor to solve by factoring when we have an equation equal to zero. So really what we want to do is get zero on this right hand side first. And the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that three and make it a zero. Otherwise our factoring is gonna be real, real tricky to solve. So we subtract three, on both sides, we get x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And now if I can factor this left side and have factors equal to 0, then I can solve this. So I look at this. This is now a trinomial. There's no greatest common factor here but 1. So I think about a is 1. I have a shortcut. What numbers multiply to give me negative 3 and add to give me negative 2? If I think about it for a second, I might come up with the, the numbers are negative three and positive one. That would multiply to give negative three and add to get negative two. So my a equals one shortcut is gonna tell me that x minus three and x plus one will be how this factors. So I have x minus three times x plus one, those two factors equal to zero. And now to solve, because I have things multiplying to get zero, I just simply take each of those things that are factors, and I will solve when those things are zero. That will give me the answer. So these are basic one-step problems. I will add three simply to both sides here to finish solving this one. This will give me that x equals three. And then this one here, I have x plus one, opposite of plus one is minus one. So we'll do that to both sides. We will get that x equals negative one is our second answer for this problem. Looking here, our last one in this intro video, we have 5x equals 2x squared minus 12. We have a couple of choices. I think up until now we've had most of the terms that were non-zero on the left side. I'm gonna go ahead and make a different decision. Moving a single term might be easier. I also tend to move everything to the side where my first term is going to be a positive term. I already have a 2x squared. That's my highest uh, power of x. I have as far as terms go. So I'm going to actually move the 5x to the right side so that I can start with a leading term that is positive rather than negative. I think most people, when they try to factor things, if their first term is a positive, that tends to go better than if the first term is negative. Okay, so here I would get zero on the left side, that's fine. And I'm gonna write these in descending power order. So I write the highest power term first, two x squared. I write the x term next, negative five x. And then I write minus 12, my constant term on the end. Okay, this is a trinomial. I scan for greatest common factor, it's one. So nothing to pull out for GCF. So now I look at my grouping and I say A times C is equal to negative 24 and B is negative five. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 and add to give me negative five. If I think about it for a second, I might get that the numbers are negative eight and positive three. Okay, so since I don't have a equals one here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the grouping and break up the middle term, regroup it in two separate pieces using negative eight and three, keeping it a like term. So it should be still an x term. So negative eight x and plus three x. I still have negative five x there. Minus 12, we didn't change either. And now with grouping, remember we simply look at GCF in pairs. The first pair has a greatest common factor of both two and x. And if I pull two x out of each term, two x times x would give me the first term and two x times negative four would give me the second term. I go ahead and copy down the x minus four that I say is gonna be a factor and I find it in the second half. I say what times x minus four will give me three x minus 12 and the answer would be positive three because three times x will give me the three x and three times the negative four will give me the negative 12. Okay, let's go ahead and write what our factors are. 
So we have 0 equals, we have x minus 4 is a factor, we have 2x plus 3 is a factor, and now that we have factors multiplying to give us 0, the solutions will be when both of these factors are 0. So when x minus 4 equals 0, we'll get an answer, and when 2x plus 3 equals 0, we'll get an answer. For this first one, x minus 4, do the opposite of minus 4, which is add 4 to both sides. That will just give us x is equal to 4 for one of our solutions. For the other one, we get the x term by itself first, so we'll get rid of add 3 with minus 3. That will give us 2x equals negative 3. And then opposite of multiply by 2 is divide by 2, so we will divide both sides by 2. And in this one, we will get that x is equal to negative 3 halves. Okay, so that's our intro to solving by factoring. Again, you will need to get everything equal to 0, and what's remaining on the other side, you will then attempt to factor, and if it's factorable, you can then set those factors equal to zero and find your solutions. All right, check out our example video. We have more examples in another video. Uh, some of them have common factor and some don't. Uh, give those a shot. We'll see you in the next one.